Hi, Emily. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and ACI? Sure. Hi, Beck. I'm glad to be here. So my name is Amelia Riceras. Um, I'm the head of solution consultant in Europe, working for ACI Worldwide, um, focused on the uh, banks and intermediary sector. And I lead a team of solution consultants that help our customers make the most of ACI solutions. I personally have more than 20 years experience in payments. And although I'm Spanish, I am based in the UK for many years. And about ACI Worldwide, um, ACI, we're, payment, we're leaders in the real-time payments. We deliver mission-critical real-time payment software solutions that enable corporations to process and manage digital payments, power omni-commerce payments, present and process bill payments, and manage fraud and risk. And in short, basically, we just help banks, merchants, and billers capture rising real-time opportunities and volumes all to meet the shifting needs of the consumers and business customers. Thank you, that's brilliant. As a first point, so could you please let us know what is the uh, European Payments Initiative? Right, um, the European Payments Initiative, or also known as EPI, is a super exciting initiative that is happening in Europe. And I think uh, I can say that is, is the kind of thing that happens uh, once in, in your lifetime or, or once in your work life, lifetime. Um, it's an initiative launched by 31 European banks and credit institutions and two third-party acquirers. And the goal is to create a new pan-European payment solution. That solution is going to leverage both instant payments and cards. And the aim is to become a new standard in payments for European consumers and merchants. Within the scope, there are both retail payments as well as peer-to-peer -peer payments. And the scope, which is very interesting, is both euro and not euro markets. Thank you very much. Um, so my next point is, uh, how does European Payments Initiative model work and when is the official launch expected? Right. So the um, EPI uh, initiative, um, basically the solution is going to be leveraging the SEPA Instant Credit Transfer, SCT Inst, and is going to be offering uh, payment instruments to consumers and merchants uh, across Europe, uh, including payment cards, uh, digital end-to-end -end instant payments, peer-to-peer -peer payments, and digital wallets. And the attractiveness of this initiative is that we're going to be able as a consumers to use this in store, online, and even for cash withdrawals. Um, initially, um, the initiative, the EPI initiative includes two payment products. So the EPI card, which is going to be both physical and virtual, and the EPI uh, digital wallet. And definitely one of the um, key ethos of the EPI initiative is the ability to produce or create um, innovation within um, the, the, the scheme. And one of these kind of innovative uh, areas is going to be the use of request to pay. So any value added service that is going to create value for both consumers and merchants, banks, central infrastructure, etc., is going to be something that the EPI initiative is going to be after. Uh, Another thing that is key within the EPI model is the fact that it's going to be based on ISO 222. That's going to be a true differentiator of the EPI initiative and it's going to enable richer data exchanges in payment services. Right, and you were asking me as well about the official launch. Well, um, that's planned for the first half of 2022, so basically just around the corner. Um, with the first EPI offerings based uh, on both the EPI card and the EPI digital wallet. A first set of services will be available at the same time as the branch is launched at European level, which I'm very excited to, to, to see that and how, how the brand is, is launched. And all these services are planned um, to be expanded in different phases from 2022 to 2024. And as we know, um, the uh, EPI plans are to complete the full deployment of the services by 2025. So obviously, as you know, uh, these are very aggressive timelines and we're in the middle of uh, a pandemic. So things may be, you know, change a bit. But as far as I know, the last I know, those are the dates. Thank you. Since the EPI integration is approaching fast in the first half of beginning, uh, beginning of uh, 2022, uh, how does EPI affect different players such as central infrastructures, banks, merchants and consumers? Right. So. 
Uh, it's going to be very interesting because um, the first thing that API needs to do, in my opinion, is create brand awareness. Because what's the point of creating all this great infrastructure and so in connections if the customers, the, the end users, consumers do not know about it? So I think there has to be an aggressive um, uh, brand awareness first. And then uh, I think because many countries in Europe already have real-time infrastructures based on SCT inst standard, whether TIPS or RT1. And I think basically um, all these different countries in Europe are going to be able to leverage those central infra those infrastructures to be able to connect to the API central infrastructure. So definitely there's going to be some level of, of interaction and some level of development um, in those infrastructures. But I think because um, so many countries already have those, those real-time uh, infrastructures that have been kind of uh, evolving over the last number of years. And, and they've been, there's been a, like an increase in, in speed of implementation because of the um, pandemic. I think that's going to be a very good starting point for the API introduction for both central infrastructures and the banks as well. Um, for merchants and consumers, I think is going to be um, we're going to require um, education, uh, brand awareness, but also the realization that um, the benefits of the real time payments bring to to the table, right? With API, at the moment when we use cards, uh, we're all used to have a reflection of of our balance. A pending balance in a, in our uh, bank account with EPI, it's going to be real time settlement, uh, which means that the funds are going to be moving from one end to another end instantly. Very different, and it's going to be a lot of value added services and value created as well by the richness of the data. Like I was mentioning earlier, with ICE two hundred and twenty two, it's going to enable a lot of um, data that is going to be available for merchants, for banks, and, and definitely for the central infrastructure. Um, more about this topic, I must say that I've been uh, writing an article that is going to be published on the special Money 2020 edition of the Financial IT magazine. So I welcome the audience to read that article to know more about my thoughts on the topic. Thank you, definitely. The article is, uh, is, is being in the work center. Uh... It will be in, in the magazine. Um, so my next question is, does uh, ACI support the European Payments uh, Initiative and what solution ACI offers? Definitely. Uh, ACI is going to be supporting the new payment standards. Uh, we support any new payment standards that are happening in the world. Obviously, we're still waiting for the publication of the scheme uh, mandates and the specifications, um, which we're expecting to get them at the, um, the beginning of 2022. But definitely, I mean, ACI, we've been supporting payment networks worldwide for more than 40 years. And we're uniquely positioned to support the EPI standard, right? And one of our strengths is the fact that we continuously invest in the evolution of our solutions to provide our customers with compliance to the existing and to new payment standards. And just to give you a re recent example of how we do things is uh, in India with the new UPI scheme, we've been able to support our customers connecting to the new scheme very successfully. And we just plan to do the same with UPI. Thank you. And uh, my last question is, uh, are you planning to attend my 2020 Europe this year? And uh, what, uh, what do you expect from the event? Right. So um, definitely plan to attend, but because of the situation we're having with the pandemic still and the traveling limitations, I'm going to be attending virtually, which is a shame because I expect the event to be super energizing, filled with networking opportunities. And, you know, we all miss a good face-to-face -face interaction. So maybe, maybe next year, but definitely we'll attend. And what I want to share with you as well is that ACI will have physical presence in this year's event. We're going to have a booth. And also I'm very proud to say that some of my colleagues um, have very active roles in the event, uh, like Jackie War Barwell, which is our Director of Payment Intelligence. She's going to be moderating a panel. Uh, also Fred Sleving, uh, which is currently VP on Product Development, but is going to be our next Head of International Markets of Solution Consulting. She's going to be a speaker in a panel. 
And finally, but not uh, least, uh, Amanda Mickelberg. She's been accepted to the Rise Up program. So it's going to be an excellent event, I think. Thank you, Amelia, for your time. Thank you. My pleasure, Beck.